Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are comparing both of the Cafe Roses by Tom Ford. So on today's video, we're going to compare and contrast the old formulation of Cafe Rose to the new 2023 release. This is a private blend version. It was originally launched with a purple sticker. I'm not sure what the collection was called. I think it was the garden collection or something when it was originally launched and then it was brought into the private blend line then we have the new version which they have moved it over to the signature range which is essentially the mainstream collection i would say it's the cheap collection but it's not cheap by any means it's a lot more expensive than your traditional fragrances but we do have here um, just for size references both of these are 1.7 ounce bottles or 50 mils so with this fragrance moving over to the signature range it has reduced quite significantly in price the private blend version of the fragrance which is this guy here would cost you 295 us dollars for a 50 ml bottle the same size in the signature range is going to run you 155 us dollars they also do manufacture one ounce bottles or 30 mils, which will be 115 US dollars. And if you want the big size, which is 100 mils or 3.4 fluid ounces in the Cafe Rose Signature Fragrance, the price would be 225 US dollars. So just for the packaging here, this is what the box looks like. I'm sorry, the lights are a little bit bright. I am filming in the dark, essentially. But this is what the box looks like. It is your traditional signature range box. It does have the TF logo at the top. You do get some information. Just so you are aware, this fragrance is manufactured in Switzerland. Then you get your barcode here at the bottom. Very nice. Mine came a little bit beat up. You know, it's not a very heavy cardboard box. It is a little bit light, if you will. So a little bit cheap, not the most expensive, which is a little bit disappointing for the price point you are paying. And this is what the bottle looks like. It is a very nice dusty rose type of color. It is a transparent bottle. We have seen this bottle originally with the Noir Extreme Feminine version, which was a black bottle with a gold label. You get your TF logo at the top here. This one has gotten a little bit cheaper. I remember with the Noir Extreme, it was full metal. It looks like it's a hollow piece now. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, there's nothing in the actual inside of the cap there. So little details like that are not really looked at. If you actually look at the back there, you can see the four like hot glue stamps to actually stick the label of this. I mean, things like that, you know, should not be things you can see on a fragrance that is this expensive. You do get your information at the bottom there. So that is what the packaging looks like for the new one. The old one is the classic Tom Ford private blend bottle. It did come in the large six ounce bottles as well as one ounce bottles and 3.4 ounce bottles. This is one of my all time favorite fragrances by the house of Tom Ford. Uh, when I worked for Tom Ford a long, long time ago, actually, this is the only one I would wear at all times, which was Cafe Rose. And it was very interesting to see that they were going to launch it into signature range. Typically, they make the fragrances a little bit lighter, a little bit more mainstream, a little bit more likable, like they did with Bois de Jour. And they also did the same thing with Post Azura and also Ombre Leather. And they have done that now with this guy here. The problem with this is I don't feel like they did a very good job with this one. I was very excited because I was like, you know, you get a good fragrance for the price. And the true DNA of the fragrance is not there. If you're going to smell it and you've never smelled the previous version of it, you're going to be like, yes, it smells identical. But once we get into the little nitty gritty details into the actual fragrance, you start to see that a lot of the great elements of this guy are missing in this. So just for the notes on this one, the top notes, you're going to get May Rose, Saffron, and Black Pepper. The middle notes are going to be Turkish Rose, Bulgarian Rose, and Coffee. And then your base is going to have Patchouli, Sandalwood, Frankincense, as well as Amber. And then this guy is going to be very similar. We're going to get a little bit of different things just so you are where I'm looking down on my notes. On this one are going to be Bulgarian Rose and it has a registered trademark, meaning that it's a synthetic version of a Bulgarian Rose. You're going to get cardamom, 
You're going to get coriander, frankincense, and sandalwood, just so you are aware this does not have a pyramid structure, so it doesn't say top, middle, and base, so I'm sorry about that for the confusion. It also has cardamom, ylang ylang, coffee, O2, registered trademark, so a synthetic version of coffee as well. Patchouli and Turkish rose, also a registered trademark, which is another synthetic component. So obviously they had to cut cost on this fragrance to actually release it with a cheaper price point, so that is understandable. Now, the notes that I have written here is that we lose a lot of the great elements. So with the original one that was launched in 2012, you do get this very beautiful patchouli with amber, which is the actual DNA of the private blend line. At least the classic ones, the new ones have deferred from that. So you kind of get that dusty, earthy fragrance, which you get in all the original private blend fragrances. Now you don't get that in this guy and it has changed a little bit. So when you first spray this you're going to be like oh they're very similar they smell identical and then they start to dry down and you're starting to see that in this one it's more rosy than anything else you're going to get more rose in the original one, you're going to get a lot more of the raw elements like i said the black pepper the patchouli the amber the frankincense which is going to make this fragrance even better because it is a coffee fragrance with rose and you do get those they are the star of the show essentially but the nice thing about this fragrance is that it has balance, it has contrast, it has a lot of elements that make it unique enough. So it's not a fragrance that's easy to recreate. It also has saffron, which is missing in the new fragrance. And the reason for that is because saffron is an extremely expensive actual fragrance. Note as it is an extremely expensive actual herb itself to manufacture. But in the new one, you're going to get a very jammy wet rose you're going to get that coffee in there it is going to be very much similar when you first spray it but you're going to have to be obviously a rose fragrance lover with this one it is carried at the top with a lot of cardamom which is going to make it kind of like a citrusy kind of fresh rose at the top it's going to be a wet jammy rose as it starts to dry down it kind of loses that rose element and kind of smells more like rose water it kind of starts to get a little bit cheap if you will it doesn't smell like a full rose it smells like if you were just having a few rose petals in your cup of tea then you get your sandalwood in this fragrance which is another star of the show and your coffee as well now this is not going to be a super big one with coffee it's obviously going to be one of the stars of the show but it's not going to be as prevalent as it was with the original formulation. The original one was very coffee centric and then mixed with that beautiful amber and sandalwood. This one itself is more like a vanilla latte. <laughs> it's like if you were to go into a rose or a floral shop and you had a nice warm cup of vanilla latte with you. This is what this smells like. It's not bad. It's going to be a big seller. You can definitely tell that because they have made it lighter. They have made it fresher. Now, I will say that one thing about the new version over the old version here is that this one itself is going to have a little bit more longevity than the original one. And the reason for that is because obviously this one has some synthetic components because they had a cut cost. Synthetic components tend to last a little bit longer. The original raw ingredients in this guy are not going to last as long, unfortunately. So I would say that out of both of these, I would still go for the original one because it has that raw element to it, that very deep, sexy sultriness that was so unique with Cafe Rose. The new one itself is going to be a little bit more bubblegum pop. It's a lighter, more mainstream version of the original formulation. And because of that, I'm not a big fan of this guy, unfortunately. I do love the bottle itself. Like I said, it has that beautiful, like, coppery, dusty rose color to it very nice for your vanity if you like that type of thing it is nice to get the similarity of a fragrance at a cheaper cost so if you do like the original one and you have an original bottle but you don't want to spray because it's so expensive and it's going to become a rare fragrance to get then i would certainly say to get this one but do not go into that with the expectation of getting the exact same fragrance for the exact same cost because you are not because you're not going to get that essentially so let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts on this fragrance are. Have you tried both of them? Have you not tried both of them? Which one do you like better? As I said, this one's my baby. I mean, this one is just, it's, it's a no for me. Also consider subscribing for more fragrance related content and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's review. And I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.